we do welcome children from all different backgrounds. It doesn't matter where you're from, it doesn't matter what school you're from, because Victory Park's keywords, our buzzwords, what drive us really are individuality, diversity, and inclusivity. Um, we understand that kids are different and not every child was made in a mold and not every child has to fit in a mold. And we're a school that respects that difference and really gives kids room to fly and to be who they are, who they want to be. In fact, our slogan for many years was free to be me. And that's what Victory Park is. It's a school where you're free to be me. Just come be yourself and learn how to fly. We are an academically excellent school for the last five or so years at least. Um, in all the benchmark testing we've done, we've been 9% above the regional averages for private schools in maths, English, Zulu. Um, we're really an excellent school. We're a forward thinking school, folks. And, and that doesn't mean that we're the industry leader in all tech and everything new. It means that we're forward thinking. We use the best practices of traditional teaching, but try to really meld those and mold those into a new path, learning as much as we can about new methodologies, new pedagogy, the new ways to teach and to inspire children. Um, you'll see some of that tonight in our presentation. Victory Park, if you ask anybody, first and foremost, they'll tell you that KDVP is a warm and nurturing environment. Our Jewish values are core to what we do, but it's a place of warmth, it's a place of kindness, and really what we say often, and I think this is the uh, key point, we're big enough to compete, but we're small enough to give every child a sense that they belong and give every child a sense to really shine um, in our schools. So we're big enough and we're small enough. And that's really what we are. And if I was going to tell you everything about Victory Park, we'd be here the whole night because it's such an awesome school. So I can't keep you here the whole night. I'm aware of that. So tonight we're going to focus on some key areas of our school, uh, which we think you'll be interested in. Uh, we'll be starting off talking about academics. We'll then move on to talk about the Judaic aspect of our school, what to expect from a Jewish point of view. Uh, we'll speak about culture, the amazing cultural things that are part of Victory Park. And of course, innovation and where we are academically. And of course, we're going to have what, what, what would a Victory Park presentation be with some proud Parkers? So we've got some parents tonight who are going to speak to you, as well as some of our wonderful students, to just show you a little bit about Victory Park through the eyes of a child, the way the child, the children view our wonderful campus. Um, so we're going to kick off tonight with uh, Mrs. Sefi Becker. Mrs. Becker is the head of our foundation phase I and mean, has been for a number of years. Uh, Mrs. Becker has just joined me on stage. Hello, Mrs. Becker. Welcome. Wonderful to have you. So Mrs. Becker is the head of our foundation phase. She has been a grade three teacher, a grade one teacher, and she's currently a grade two teacher. So she knows the system backwards. She's also a proud Parker herself, um, having gone to Victory Park as a student many years ago. Not that many years ago, Mrs. Becker. I apologize. It was only a few, <laughs> a few years ago. Um, our grade one teachers are Mrs. Shelley Siegel and Mrs. Joy Kamaroff. They are not with us tonight on the webinar, they're not presenting, but really an, an amazing duo, an amazing combo of grade one teachers, caring, nurturing, forward thinking. They use tech as much as anyone could, and they are really wonderful. And between them, they've got a combined over 40 years experience teaching grade one just at King David Victory Park. So they really are brilliant. They're not with us tonight. Um, they are listening, and anyone who wants more information on how to get hold of them, please, you could ask us as well at the end of the, of the webinar via the, the Q&A. Um, Mrs. Beck, I'm going to hand over to you to tell us a little bit about the academics at King David Victory Park Primary School. Thank you, Rabbi Asif, and good evening to everybody, and thank you so much for joining us today. I'm going to speak, as Rabbi Asif said, a little bit about academics and our view on the child. So at King David Victory Park, our primary focus is on the child. We pride ourselves on being a small, nurturing, warm environment. We allow your child to grow and develop at their own pace. More importantly, we help your child build their self-confidence. At our school, because we're such a warm, small, nurturing environment, the teachers get to know every child by name, and we have conversations with them every day and get to know about their family life, and we get to know the children so well. Here at King David Victory Park, we adopt a holistic approach. By a holistic approach, I mean that we don't only nurture the academic side of the child, we nurture the social and the emotional side as well. As Rabbi Sif mentioned earlier, 
our academic standards are very, very important to us. We strive to achieve and maintain the highest of academic standards. Our teachers are continually um, attending training sessions and keeping up with the latest trends in education. They are always making changes to their teaching methodology to make sure that we maintain the highest of standards. The one thing we definitely focus on is bringing as much creativity as we can into our lessons. The children are always encouraged to explore, to experiment, and to simply try. We try and teach the children that even though their first attempt might not have worked out as well as they thought it should, it doesn't matter. Just try and try again. Always make a plan and let's try a different avenue. A typical day in grade one will include English lessons, maths lessons, Hebrew and Jewish studies. We also introduce Afrikaans and Zulu, but those two languages get introduced in the third term, which is around August time. We prefer to allow the children to get to grips with English and Hebrew first. The children also are privileged to do art, music, PT, um, and IT. So as you can see, the children have a very, very busy week. So it's no surprise that they come home and they say, mom, we are exhausted. The highlight of their week, um, in my opinion, is that the children get to spend time in our beautiful new hub. You'll get to hear about our new hub um, in more detail in a little while. In the hub, the children get to read beautiful, new, exciting books. And best of all, they get to create and to make things in, a, in the area that we have called make a space area. And this is where their imagination absolutely run wild. In English, the grade one children are introduced to the letters and sounds through our Jolly Phonics program. This program is multi-sensory and it's interactive. This program is designed to teach the children to recognize the letter sounds and relate the sounds to symbols so needed for reading and writing. From a very early stage in grade one, the children start to build words, they start to read simple readers, and they get to write their very own sentences. King David follows the MyPal Singapore Maths program. This program instills a very good understanding of mathematical concepts. It builds a very strong number sense. And most importantly, it focuses on problem solving, which is so important for day-to-day -day life. Because they spend so much time problem solving, they get to think laterally. The MyPals program also enables the children to work in a very high number range with absolute confidence. So to sum up, our intense focus is on keeping up with the times and maintaining a high academic standard while ensuring that the uniqueness of every child is nurtured and more importantly, ensuring that every child flourishes at our school. Your children will leave us clever and confident. We so look forward to welcoming your children to our new grade one group of 2021. And personally, I am looking forward to meeting each and every one of you in person. Thank you. Thanks so much, Mrs. Becker. Wonderful to, to have you as always. And as I said, Mrs. Becker is the real expert in, uh, in foundation phase teaching and she's part of our staff. And just thank you so much, Mrs. Becker, for all you do for our school, really. Uh, uh, we feel privileged to have you on board. Um, also, just to mention, guys, tonight that um, we, we haven't been able, because of the length of the ceremony, to include um, every, everyone 
on our staff and to be able to let them present to you just to let you know we have a wonderful academic support program as well as part of our school academic support works differently in the foundation phase and in the senior school in the foundation phase which is the grade one children would get an ex exposure to next year is the wonderful staff of Ms. Kerry Teasdale, Mrs. Lana Stern and Ms. Elisa Passman. They come into the classrooms, they do pull out students who may be struggling with any of the concepts um, in maths or in English or in anything for that example. And it doesn't have to be children who, who have learning difficulty. It could be any child who's really struggling with learning. Our dedicated learning support staff will come help them privately in small groups or one-on-ones and uh, take them um, and, and enrich their, their whatever they're learning in class. And of course, we have a dedicated social worker, full-time social worker, Mrs. Thelma Cohen, who's been with us for a number of years as well. Highly experienced, loving personality. She calls herself the, the feelings teacher. So Mrs. Mrs. Cohen is with us 24 seven as well, um, a full-time social worker. We're gonna move on now to discuss the Judaica of the school. Um, and uh, the person who embodies Judaica at King David Victory Park is none other than Mrs. Kareen Sandler. Uh, Mrs. Kareen Sandler is um, a proud Parker herself. And now we didn't do this deliberately, but it's just coming to me now that many of our teachers are ex victory Parkers because once victory Park's in your blood, once it's in the system, it's very hard to get rid of it. You fall in love with the place. And Mara Kareen Sandler is the Jewish engine of our school. She does so much for our school on the Jewish front. Um, Mara Kareen has been teaching at the school for over 26 years and she's still such a young lady. Um, so Mara Kareen, we're going to hand over to you to discuss a little bit about the Judaica aspect of our school. Thank you, Rabbi. Good evening to everybody. Yiddishkeit is the heart and soul of our special school. At King David, we are proud of our rich Jewish heritage in our state of Israel. And we try and take a holistic approach to Judaism. We have davening every morning, which culminates at the end of grade one with an amazing davening breakfast, where parents and grandparents are welcome to come and see everything that their children have learned over the year. We celebrate each Chag as it occurs in the calendar and commemorate each important day in Israel's history as they occur too. The highlights for grade one are coming dressed up for Purim and hearing the Megillah being read, attending our Pesach Sidorim and being part of the Pesach plays, and the unity they feel towards Israel when we celebrate Yom Atzmaut. During the week in grade one, they have two Jewish studies lessons and six Hebrew lessons. During these lessons, they learn the beauty of the Hebrew language and they will be reading by the end of grade one. They learn about the wonderful things the Torah has to offer, the laws and our traditions and our heritage. We go through each Chag in a, in a deeper level and we also touch on other aspects of Jewish life. We encourage the children to ask questions and to learn about their heritage. Our teachers are passionate and live by example. They enthuse a love for Yiddishkeit into the child. Our Jewish Studies Department has an open door policy. We try and include not only the child, as well as the whole family with everything that we do. We have amazing challah bakes and have dollar factories where the parents are welcome to join us. We also partner with the parts of the board called the Soul Division and the Deej. The Soul encompasses all Jewish aspects of, of life across the schools. Its focus is to make Judaism and Zionism relevant and inspiring and uplifting. It touches the formal curriculum, as well as informal education, parent engagement, and positive Jewish travel and experiences. The Deej, or Division of Informal Jewish Education, run interactive programs each year, with each grade on a different topic, our grade one and two learners are also part of the PJ Library program. This program provides each child with 10 free books on a Jewish topic a year, and it encourages the parents to spend time with their child, to read the book, to discuss the book, and to learn from the book. There is no app for your lap. So the, the PJ Library books allow you time to spend quality time with your children. Judaism is palpable at our special school. And we hope that if you do decide to send your child to our school, that they will be welcomed into this passionate Jewish environment as their home away from home. Thank you. 
Thanks so much, Mara Karin, and thank you for everything you do for our school. And your passion really is enthused into everything that we do. And Judaism is part of what we are. It's, it's in our bones, and it's really something palpable at Victory Park Primary School. Um, and, and anyone who's lucky enough to come will feel that as soon as you walk through the doors. Um, so thank you, Mara Karin. Uh, we're going to move across now to a different aspect of our school, which is, of course, the cultural aspect of our school. And um, really, culture, arts and culture are differentiated at Victory Park Primary. Um, we don't view the cultural subjects as subjects. In fact, they're confidence builders and they're enablers. And they're really, they've done wonders for our children. Um, we have a very artistic, very culturally orientated parent body. Um, and that's really part of so much that we do in our school. And to, to share that with you today, um, is Mr. Andrew Edgar. I'm going to ask you, Mr. Edgar, to come forward and uh, unmute yourself. Mr. Edgar really has taken culture at Victory Park to another level. He's also the head of student affairs, uh, but he's really, his plays are on another level. The fantastic choir, which you'll see a little bit later, have really just heightened the profile of arts and culture at our school. Uh, we're very privileged to have Mr. Edgar, and uh, he's going to share with you a little bit of our approach, what we do, and what makes VP special on the cultural front. Mr. Edgar, over to you. Thank you, Rabbi. Um, well, I'm, I'm so excited to be able to share a little bit with you this evening, everybody. Good evening about our wonderful cultural side of, of Victory Park. So if you didn't know, uh, Victory Park has a reputation of having a, a, a vibrant cultural life. Uh, there is so much that we offer the children on a, a cultural side. And culture forms a really integral part of their daily and weekly experience. So as you've heard, they have weekly music and art lessons uh, from teachers who are truly passionate about their subject and uh, love to provide platforms, opportunities for children to, to express their creativity. Um, music for me is a, is, is a wonderful medium of learning. And uh, apart from all the wonderful instruments we get to play and the music and the singing, music allows children to be free. It allows them to have a different side of school, to see a different side of school. There's a different way of learning. Uh, for me, the, the, the key word to music is fun. If music isn't fun, we're doing something wrong. And children will discover that it's a wonderful way to learn. When you're having fun, you learn easier. It's, it's a great way to learn. Part of our, our music is we, we include a bit of drama. So the children learn to express themselves through movement, through uh, speaking. We encourage them to, to learn how to work in a team, uh, how to project their voices how to be confident when they're speaking in front of people. Small little things, but things that are so important, life skills that they need. And it also allows us to include some of our Jewish themes, uh, to take a Jewish theme and to incorporate it into a drama lesson is a wonderful way to teach the children about those themes. They have a weekly art lesson. They get to do all kinds of weird and wonderful things. And it's wonderful to see what the children produce on a weekly basis. We also try to include um, extra murals. So we offer them public speaking, debating. We have a marimba band, also great fun. The kids get to come and whack on instruments and learn to play together. They learn about rhythm and timing. And we also have a great choir, which I'm very, very proud of. The choir has achieved some wonderful things over the years. And at the moment, we boast 60 choristers in our choir. And that's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful achievement for the children to be able to join the choir. And for them, it's, it's almost a, a measure of status. It's, hey, I'm in the choir. And that's a cool thing. And we, we have seen a lot of, which I love, a lot of boys joining our choir and we have some incredible singers uh, and they learn about teamwork again, how to blend, how to harmonize, how to work together. It's not just about the individual, it's about working together to create a wonderful sound. Our choir forms a huge and, and have a huge role to play in our annual productions, which for me is a, is a real passion. Our productions are done every year 
in the senior phase, we do them every year. In the foundation phase, we do them every second year. But the children here get introduced to the magical world of theater. And there is so much there to learn. They get to work on a stage. They get to have lights in their eyes. They get to learn about sets and costumes and makeup and props and all those wonderful things that go into making the theater world what it is. But there's more to it than just that. Our, uh, our productions are very unique in that every single child is given a place. Even if they don't like to be on stage, we find a role for them. So they're able to join the backstage crew. They're able to help with the sound and the lighting. They're able to help with prop making, with uh, costumes, everything that's there. They get to learn about it. They get to find their place. And that's so important. Um, we have wonderful stories of, of children who didn't have a voice when they came to us. Uh, I think particularly of a grade four learner who came a few years ago and high levels of anxiety, just couldn't fit in, couldn't find their place. And we put her on stage, few lines to say, and something awoke in her. And uh, we're very proud to say that from that shy, inhibited girl who didn't know what she wanted to do, she's now in our high school and she is thriving. Uh, academically, socially, and culturally, she's landed several lead roles in productions, voice to absolutely die for, and such a wonderful testament to this art form. Because sometimes kids are not the academics. Sometimes they aren't the sporty ones. And in a society that is so sport driven and so achievement driven, culture often gets pushed aside. And here at Victory Park, we want every child to find their niche, to find a thing that they're good at. And the cultural side often does that. A child who is so quiet in class, who often gets overlooked sometimes, um, the quiet ones. And you put them on a stage, you give them a microphone, you put some lights in their eyes and something happens, something magical happens. And for me as a teacher, that is more important than putting on a great production. It's seeing what happens to these children when they're given an opportunity to be their best. And that's what is so wonderful about our school. We're going to um, show you a little video clip of some of our past productions. To give you a little bit of a taste of what your children are in for if they come to Victory Park. I can guarantee you that they might forget what they got for music for the moment, what they got for maths. They might forget what team they played in. They will never forget the experiences that they had on stage, the teamwork, the camaraderie, and how they got to live out their dreams. And yes, in case you're wondering, every voice you're going to hear in these clips, that's their real voice. Please enjoy. Thank you, Mr. Edgar, for everything you do. We're going to share that uh, clip with you now, folks. And just to bear in mind, the oldest person on stage is maybe 13, and the youngest person on stage is probably 9 or 10. So, so we really hope that you enjoy this video of some of our productions that we've put on over the years.
So there you go, folks. That's some of the cultural highlights from King David Victory Park over the years. Um, over 200 students involved in those plays, like Mr. Edgar said, everyone gets a chance to shine and the stage is really somewhere where our students come alive. So it's really fantastic um, and something your children will be exposed to over the years. Um, we haven't presented our sports program this evening, um, but just to let you know that we have a two-man sports department. The director is Mr. Keith McGovender, and he's ably helped by Marissa Skierpers. Both of them outstanding sportsmen in their own right, Mr. Gavinder himself being a pro tier volleyball player. And together they run a department where really we place participation above all else. Participation is our main pillar. We still try for, strive for excellence and we have an outstanding coaching staff across all codes. Uh, but ultimately we want every single child to be able to get a chance to play, to learn how to play a sport and build their confidence. A teams are obviously your teams that are the best players. B teams are rotational teams. But every, chance, every child at Victory Park really gets a chance to play a sport and a team sport, something that they may not do at larger, more competitive schools. Um, and we really have an outstanding sports department, which you'll be able to access, of course, after this webinar, should you be interested. We're now going to move over to a brand new area of our school, an area of innovation. Of course, we're always innovating. Uh, but 2019 brought with it some significant changes, um, one of which was the building of our new innovation hub. And I'm going to ask Mrs. Amanda Riesinger, um, the head of the hub, to join us tonight. Um, she's ably helped as well by the head of IT, Mr. Kevin Beloy, who's not presenting tonight, but really a computer and educational expert. Um, Mr. Riesinger herself is a creative teacher, a uh, former class teacher, but an arts teacher, arts specialist. Um, and she's actually as well a, a qualified life coach. So she brings so much more to the table than just teaching. And Mrs. Riesinger is in charge of the hub and everything that it brings into our school and into our curriculum. So, Mr. Riesing, I'm going to hand over to you um, to present to our audience this evening. Beautiful. Thank you. Reba, are you going to do the slideshow for me? I will indeed. I'm going to get that going right now. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Cool. Grade one is the most profound time of growth and exploration for our children. Uh, let me take you to have a look inside of our hub, which is a place where we um, yeah, we do all kinds of amazing things inside of the hub. So I'm just waiting to see the next slide. There we go. Wonderful. The hub is where we um, do all kinds of different um, explorations. You see that we have movable furniture. We would call this a collaboration space. Um, where children collaborate, um, work on project-based learning, and over here we have an interactive screen, where which is cutting edge twenty. Um, onto our next area, you can see that we have a a, a large amount of computers for um, investigation and inquiry. Here's Mr. Beloy, the computer teacher, our expert at computers. He teaches coding, robotics. Ah, coding, robotics, and Microsoft Office to the children, among other things. And then on to this, uh, our next slide, which will be our boutique library. There we go. Our boutique library, we have beautiful hand -picked, uh, selected books for our children to enjoy. They come in once a week with their teacher and they're able to choose a book to go off and enjoy at home. I'm going to take you over to one of our reading pods now. The reading pods are beautiful sunny areas where they can go and read a book. Let's have a look shortly. There we go. Beautiful sunny areas where the children can choose a book and go off and have a look through and um, enjoy friendship and good reading. All right, we'll take you over in a second to the next area. Let's have a look. Beautiful. Okay, in, in uh, 2021, we hope to include more virtual reality and also to include robotics into the hub. So that is going to be something that's coming up soon. Um, let's have a look at our next area. Let's see. You can see lots of things, lots and lots of uh, beautiful things to explore and uh, technology to learn from. Here we have our makerspace, which is one of my favorite areas. This is where we have um, the bringing together of science, technology, engineering, art, and maths in carefully designed um, 
activities for the grade ones and for the whole school. Um, if we look across, I'm going to take you to look a little closer at our 3D printers. So that's our next picture. You're going to see our wonderful 3D printers. The children will be designing um, on a 3D app and then they're able to print out their designs in 3D. We use um, environmentally friendly plastic so it you know it does become part of the earth again it doesn't destroy our planet which is very important for us let's have a look at the design process because the design process in this area is very important we want our children to um, learn how to design so i'm going to show you the interact the the uh, writable wall um, in a moment there we go so this is the design process this is what the children learn to do which is design come up with an idea here we see them designing their Dr. Seuss socks and actually writing on the wall. There we go, yes, thank you. And so writing on the wall, which is just every child's dream, you know, they absolutely love that. Let's have a look at the birding, sorry, the building of some bird feeders. There we go. The, the um, project was to create a bird feeder after we'd uh, heard a wonderful story. And here we see them building and cutting and making and gluing chatting there we go we also uh, encourage a growth mindset so there are no problems we work through anything we need to work through there we see this the story that we linked up with the western bird which is a very important story for a hol uh, important holiday and then on to the next one uh, the children in the next picture are building bridges so there are many different projects that they encounter and explore they're working together to build a bridge in this picture over here. Let's have a look at the next one, which is we were building um, friendship towers. And you can just see a lot of laughing um, and a lot of fun happening in this picture. And at the end of the day, we can say that our children are having a lot of fun while growing and learning. When learning is happening, um, while you're having fun, the acquisition of skills is the best. And here we can see that finally, this is the kind of childhood that dreams are made of. So thank you very much, everyone. The hub is the br a brilliant space to learn and grow in. Thank, thank you. you so much, Mr. Jason It's a really, uh, it's an unbelievable space, folks. It's this new age. It's technologically forward thinking. It's designed for, for 21st century learning. It's unbelievable. We're so proud of it and everything Mrs. Riesinger and Mr. Beloy do in that space is really inspirational. So thank you, Mrs. R, for, for everything you and your team do in the hub. Um, it's one of a kind. And it's actually a very good segue into our next speaker um, because the, the whole hub was actually a PTA project that together with the school, the PTA worked over a period of um, three years to, to, to develop this space. And the money was really all raised by past parkers, by parents, by anyone from small donations to large to make this vision happen. And it's really unbelievable. And our next speaker tonight is Mr. Peter Berman. Uh, Peter Berman needs, needs uh, very little introduction. I'm going to ask Mr. Berman to come forward. He's not only the chairman of our PTA, but he's actually a father to three boys and a very proud uh, Parker for many years. Um, and he's going to tell you a little bit about the important role that parents play in the King David Richard Park campus. So, uh, Mr. Berman, over to you. Thank you, Rabbi Ricky, and uh, good evening, everybody. Thanks for joining us, albeit virtually, but it's uh, good to have you here. Um, yeah, I'm just going to talk about from a parent's perspective in terms of We've got a lot of critical decisions facing us as parents today, but I have to say that um, when it came to the choice of school, my wife and I, we really, we didn't hesitate in choosing St. David Victory Park. Um, the fact that I did attend the, the entire campus right from the nursery school through to matric certainly played a part in that decision because of the fact that I have so many unbelievable, amazing memories um, of attending King David and uh, when, I, when I look back on my school career, uh, it really is filled with joy. So when we, when we, I mean, we are big fans of the whole Sabji community and all the schools, but I have to say in terms of that special flavor that King David Richie Park offers, um, it's, it's very unique. Um, as has been discussed this evening with regard to all the strengths that the school has from the educational side, the sporting, the participation, and obviously the cultural as well. Um, and just to elaborate a little bit on that, um, I think, you know, King David Victory Park has always had a very strong reputation um, when it comes to culture, but I, I do believe that it's now been really taken to the next level. And the level and the standard of musicals 
and plays and, and choir and everything else that's been explained this evening is really at the next level. And we could hold our heads up high in terms of comparing us to any other school out there when it comes to that specifically. And we, uh, I mean, we, we literally becoming famous for, for the, the standard of musicals and, and culture that we've got at King David. So I think that is a very big pull factor. Um, the emphasis from a PTA perspective, um, as Rabbi Ricky said, I currently am the chairman of the PTA for the last couple of years. Um, our emphasis, yes, part of it is fundraising, and we were able to really drill down into gathering all our resources. Um, and this is a very good indication of how strong the, the pool is of King, King David Victory Park with regards to alumni, past students, parents, teachers, everybody pulled together. And the fact that we were able to produce a world-class hub that you saw some pictures of there in the, in the last presentation is a best testament to the type of message that I'm trying to pull through here is that there's a special uniqueness and a family type atmosphere that exists at King David Victory Park. It may sound slightly cliche, you may have heard that term family, but it's real. And the reality is that unless you've been part of the school in some way, shape or form, whether it be as a student or a parent and obviously a teacher, um, there's a certain magic that exists at King David Victory Park. And um, from, a, from a PTA perspective, just to, sorry, just I digress for one second, but just to come back to the PTA, our focus is definitely on community building as well. Uh, we put together some fantastic projects throughout the year um, that have nothing to do necessarily with fundraising. It's about building the community, bringing the togetherness in, um, and enhancing and uh, creating that magical family atmosphere that I speak of. Um, what I can tell you with absolute confidence is once you have chosen, and if you do choose, and you make the wise decision to choose King David Victory Park as the school of choice for your kids, it really is a box that you can tick. And you can have peace of mind to know that your children are being taken care of in a world-class establishment. They are being nurtured, they're being educated, they're being encouraged, there's participation. And taking their skill levels really to, to a level that maybe they or perhaps you weren't aware of. As Mr. Edgar even mentioned, uh, an example of you know, some of the children that just come out of their shell and um, blossom into fantastic performers or students or whatever else it might be. Um, that is a great example of what King David Victory Park is about. Um, the school is inclusive. Um, there's a spot for everybody at King David Victory Park. And um, I certainly, even though, as I mentioned, I was a past student, um, having my three boys there and my wife and I are incredibly happy with, with the, the, the choice of King David Victory Park. And I can assure you that I think it will be one of the best decisions that you could possibly make in selecting KDVP as your school of choice. It's a family, come join us. And uh, we look forward to welcoming you, welcoming you next year. And uh, thanks very much for your time. Enjoy the rest of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Thank you so much uh, for, your, for your words. They really do come from the heart. He's a, he's a proud Parker through and through. And what Peter's saying is true. There's a unique family atmosphere. We always say in every, every assembly we have, we're not a school, we're a community at Victory Park. And uh, I think parents will get that sense once you join us next year of the close-knit nature, of the human nature of the campus. It's not just school as usual. We really are family. So thank you, Peter, for your involvement in that and everything you do for our schools. Um, our, our real, you know, everything said and done, we've had tonight, we've had our culture and our Judaica. In the end of the day, this is about the students. Um, we're a proud school and we're proud of what we do for our students. And we'd be remiss tonight if we didn't include some of our students. Um, and so we've chosen two of our students who really traveled the whole journey with us from grade one all the way through to grade seven, um, Emma Dakes and Ben O'Bell. They also happen to be our mini city councillors this year. That's not why they were chosen. They're just fantastic children and real proud parkers from grade one through to grade seven. So Ben and Emma, if you guys are there, please turn on your cameras um, and unmute yourselves. And let's hear from the students themselves uh, what it's like to be at KDVP Primary. Ben, I'm gonna hand over to you first. Uh, why don't you take us away? Perfect. Good evening all. My name is Benjamin Nobel, and I'm here to tell you about my experience as a true Parker. I've been a KDVP since I was 19 months old, which now feels like a lifetime, because it basically is my entire life. However, at the tender age of 13, and the grade 7 pupil, I can safely say that I've had some truly unmatched experiences at KDVP. This year has been difficult, especially for our youth from homeschooling to not being able to socialize with my classmates, 
missing out on exciting and pivotal grade seven experiences and all the fun in between. The school has always had our backs. They have handled this hard and unprecedented situation with ease and care and have really made us feel safe and secure. Being a small school like KDVP has really benefited my personality. It's a family environment where everybody knows each other well and truly cares for one another. The teachers are admirable. They speak to us directly when something is wrong and they're always there for you if you need to simply chat. They're both understanding, caring, and at the same time, offer an accessible way of educating us that is fun, entertaining, and well thought out. This kind of occurrence does not happen at larger schools. They simply can't offer the same amount of one-on-one -on -one attention. This year, before all the craziness, I was voted in as one of the many councillors to represent our school. Although it has taken a different slant due to COVID-19, it has been a truly fulfilling experience. I've made some great friends from all walks of life, cultures, and ethnicities, and we have assisted in various community projects to help those in need. Although I have not been able to wear my heavy deputy mayor robe, I've still carried the load of responsibility of my duties to the best of my ability. These core skills in accepting and doing justice to a leadership position are thanks to what I have learned through the years at King David Victory Park. We would love to welcome you to a wonderful, enriching and loving school where each and every child is an individual. Thank you. Thanks so much, Ben. Really appreciate your kind words. Um, I did not tell him what to say. Um, we're now going to hand over to Emma Dakes to, to, to address our parents this evening. Good evening, everybody. I'm Emma Dakes, grade seven pupil at King David Victory Park Primary School and Mini City Councillor. When I think of my years at King David Victory Park, I think of one word, alive. A for all rounded, L for loving environment, R for individuality, V for victory, and E for excellence. Since I started at the school in grade one, I've had seven amazing happy years and I'm now graduating from primary school as a proud Parker. I've been exposed to so many different experiences that have taught me so much. Academic excellence in our modern new classrooms, participation on stage and in our famous annual plays, Jewish traditions and Yiddishkeit that we celebrate every Friday and on every festival, Chesed and outreach projects throughout every year, so many interesting outings and different extramural activities, sportsmanship and competitiveness on the sports field, great excitement with the launch of our new state-of-the-art hub and auditorium, and the amazing way in which online learning has taken place during this difficult year. If I look back, I would say the most important thing that I've gained from the school is self-confidence. Victory Park is a small school with a big heart, where every child is recognised for who they are and are given every opportunity possible to grow and find the thing that makes them special. In this school, you're a winner no matter what. You come into Victory Park as an anonymous grade one, but over the years with loving support and encouragement from not only caring teachers, but also amazing friends, you leave as a recognized individual. You come as a child and you leave as a match. We are welcoming you to the home of the Parkers, a school alive with opportunities. You could not make a better choice. Thank you. Thanks so much, Emma. I really appreciate your words. Also from the heart, folks. Uh, you know, the, I, I was yesterday sent uh, the kids' speeches. They weren't prompted what to say. They wrote their own speeches. And I think that encapsulates really what Victory Park is. It's a place where every child can shine and gain the self-confidence like you saw with Ben and Emma tonight. So thank you, Ben and Emma, for, for your kind words. Um, unfortunately, folks, you know, the initial plan for this was to take you on live feeds to our school. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to cut out and go live now to someone at the school. We were just worried about Wi-Fi. We were worried about load shedding. So we put a video together to take you on a guarded tour, so to speak, of our school. So you get a glimpse and a feel for what it's like. You'll also notice the school choir playing throughout the background. Um, so we hope you enjoy this beautiful video. There are times when you might feel aimless, can see the places where you belong. 
that you will find that there is a purpose it's been there within you all along when you near it you can almost hear it it's like a symphony
uh, folks, that's a little glimpse into what it's like at KVVP. Um, that's really the end of our formal presentation. I know that we have a couple more Q&A questions um, that parents wanted answered. So I'm going to ask Ms. Nirvana Rogers just to come forward. Um, our marketing manager, I also have to thank her all the effort she's put in tonight to making tonight possible. So Mrs. Rogers, welcome to the forefront. Um, she's normally backstage, so she gets nervous when we bring her friends from house, but uh, she deserves the spotlight. Um, hello, Mrs. Rogers, what questions do the parents out there have for us? Thank you, Rabbi. I'd like to thank all our parents for joining us. It really means a lot to us that you've taken the time off. Um, we've got three very interesting questions um, that I think you should answer. One is from Harvey and Jade. What is the contingency plan should the COVID-19 restrictions still be a factor at the beginning of 2021? Well, listen, it's a great question. I think that uh, every single one of us um, aren't sure what the future holds. Um, but thankfully, I must say that Victory Park and Sabji in general have done like a brilliant job in being able to not only manage um, the emotional well-being of our students and our curriculum, but actually teach brilliantly. Um, the teachers are being upskilled all the time, um, tremendous ongoing training happening, and really should COVID still be with us in January, I hope it won't be, um, but students will still be welcomed in a way that we can. Uh, we'll still have the dual medium, and I think that will be with us for some time. Amazing remote learning as well as in-person learning. And then I'm actually quite proud to say that really our school, from an academic point of view throughout this period, none of our students, not even our grade ones, there's been no compromise. Um, in fact, our grade one teachers are say that they're even further ahead than they would normally would be. And I think that's because of the nature of being able to um, break into different groups, to focus intensely on certain kids um, who have, may have a deficit, to be able to hone in on what they need. Um, so, so Harvey and Jade, um, I'm confident for next year, come what may, whether it's a simple uh, blended model like we have now, partly in person, partly remote, um, but, but I'm confident from an academic point of view, the grade ones will be held um, as they need to be, whether that's online or in person. Um, I'm fully confident in our team and our abilities, so it's going to be good, not to worry. Um, next one. Mr. Wonderful. Um, Rabbi, tell us, Grace says that the hub is incredible. Are you looking at a blended learning model going forward next year? So Grace, uh, the hub is incredible. I promise you those, those pictures don't even do it justice. It's unbelievable. It's mind-blowing. And really what we're finding is that what the hub brings to the party is that all of this creative thinking is starting to filter into all of our subjects. We don't, we're starting to move out of teaching in silos. Uh, where every subject is specific to its craft. Of course, that still happens when it comes to giving over of skills, but creativity, innovation, um, forward thinking, collaboration, all these things are being sewn and woven into everything we do, every single subject. We don't want to just have a hub period, which we do have, but teachers are able to book the hub and use it for all of their lessons and really bring modern teaching pedagogy into everything that we do. Um, in terms of specific blended learning, which usually refers to um, some kind of measure of online teaching versus um, in-person teaching. We definitely will be doing blended learning next year. We've learned so much this year just through our integration of Teams, Microsoft Teams into our teaching, that our teachers are really doing a brilliant job. And I think we don't even know what COVID is going to present to us for the future of education, but uh, it's going to change the way we look at the schools. It's going to change the way that we educate our children. Um, and I'm very excited, actually. I think COVID's given us in some strange way a bit of a gift. Um, I think this is going to revolutionize the way we take things forward. We definitely will be having a, a, a blended component to our learning next year, definitely. I hope to show you, Grace, the hub in person one day soon. Right, Rabbi. Chanel asked, how important is play in the grade one year and what is your homework policy? Okay, interesting question. So, um, so Chanel, thanks for asking that. Um, in terms of play, I think that parents what parents do need to realize that grade one, of course, is different to grade R. Um, it's not play um, all the time, although we understand the importance of play and how children learn through play. So grade one, particularly in the beginning, it starts very slowly. Children is a bit more rigid um, and the children, it is, does come, they are quite tired in the beginning because there is desk time, there is writing time, and a lot of these skills do take it out of the children. But the, the teachers are mandated to really take brain breaks, to let the kids play, to let the kids learn through play. We try and incorporate as much as we can, but bear in mind it is not grade R. So you're not going to have that level of play. It is a bit more of a rigidity um, to the, the grade one structure, but we encourage play um, and our teachers incorporate it throughout the day. They have Lego kits in their class, which the kids break up into uh, just to give them a bit of inspiration and creativity. 
Um, so we try and really give the kids as many breaks, realizing their age as much as they can. And I'm glad you asked that question because my only problem with the video that we showed now was that we've upgraded our grade one playground. That footage, that aerial footage is old footage. That's our old wooden playground equipment. Uh, we've got unbelievable new, uh, very exciting playground equipment. So the, the grade one playground looks even better, Ms. Uh, Chanel, and they're gonna have a wonderful, wonderful time um, on our playground. Our homework policy um, fluctuates, and that's the nice thing about Victory Park. We, we do whatever we be believe is best for our kids. Um, and we've tried many different models over the years um, from always going no homework to going to homework periods um, to really just finding a balance between only sending home what's necessary. Um, we don't send homework, just busy work. We send homework that the children need for consolidation. You can expect maths homework and reading every single day in the foundation phase. Um, that is critical for children to rehearse and to really consolidate those skills. Um, but we limit it completely. Um, and we really hope that children aren't overburdened with just work to keep them busy, but only things that are critical to their growth and their development. Um, so yeah, I think I hope that answers your question. Um, yes, Rabbi. The, the next question from Lisa Koppel. With you leaving, how will this affect the school's leadership? So uh, Lisa, I'm very passionate about the school. Um, very passionate. In fact, I'm a Linksfield boy. I went to Linksfield High School, um, but I've definitely fallen in love with Victory Park. Um, and we went on an extensive search to make sure that our school, a school that I love, is not being left in the lurch. And we found an unbelievable leader in Mr. Kevin Lees. Uh, Mr. Lees is uh, really a senior teacher and a very highly decorated educator. He's taught for many years in the Eastern Cape, was the head of academics at St. George's, a very a respected school, and then moved on to being the headmaster of Theodore Herzl, the, the Jewish school in Port Elizabeth, where he's been for the last eight years. Mr. Lees really, He's so, he's so, we're so similar, um, which is what I love. We've got the same ethos, um, caring about kids, um, warmth and energy, and, and I'm completely comfortable. And, and that was the most important thing for me, is to hand over to someone that I felt comfortable, could really make sure that the ethos of Victory Park is maintained um, and kept in hand. And Mr. Lisa is that man. Um, I've got complete confidence in him, and I'm sure you will too when you meet him. Um, in fact, I think he's here tonight because he's actually going to be bringing his kids to Victory Park next year as well. So I'm very excited for, for Mr. Lees. And I must also tell the parents that I'm not leaving the school system. I'm still part of SABG, very much so. I'm just moving to head office, but my, my heart is still with these schools and with Victory Park in particular. Um, and Mr. Mr. Lees is going to do an outstanding job, better than I could. He's a far better educator than me. Um, so, so you're all in great hands. Thanks, Rabbi. Um, are there any more questions? Because I've got nothing on the Q&A section. Folks, listen, I think you don't, have to, you don't even have to ask now. Um, you can set up meetings. Parents who want private meetings with the greatest of pleasure, we can set those up for you. Um, I just want to close off and just say that we have a poll at the bottom, um, which I'm going to launch now. So we appreciate it if you could just take the quick poll. Um, the poll is just to know what you're feeling about VP, what you're thinking, what are the chances of you coming tonight. So please fill in that poll if you can. Um, for us to get that info afterwards. And just to close off tonight, folks, we've just gone over an hour. I don't want to keep you too long. Um, but really, there are many amazing, amazing Jewish schools in Johannesburg. Um, they're all brilliant, and they're all unique, and they all bring something new to the table. Um, and to make the best decision, you need to understand what's best for you, for your family, and of course, knowing your child and what's best for them. And I think that what makes Victory Park unique is that it gives your child the ability to be a big fish in a small pond. Uh, what I mean by that is that, you know, in many big competitive schools, sometimes children, only the really big fish um, fly, and most people are small fish. Victory Park gives a child the ability to really thrive and to try everything, to try sport, to try culture without that fear, fear of failure, and to taste success in so many different areas, to build their confidence in really any area that they choose. Um, it's a school where people are recognized as individuals, and I think that's what makes, what makes us so special. Um, we focus on their heads, um, but more importantly, we focus on the children's hearts. And it's a really warm school, and you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong with any Jewish school in this town, that's the truth. But Victory Park really is special. And we're hoping that you'll join, and we're hoping that you come and see it for yourselves one day. But if you do, you're making a great choice. Ultimately, all you want and all we want is happy children. And I'm very proud to say that Naval Victory Park children, by and large, are really happy at our school. It's a happy place, and it'll be a happy place for your children as well. Um, and on that note, I think we're going to sign off. So just a thanks to Mrs. Rogers. Thanks to all our wonderful panelists tonight for everything they've put in. 
and to all the staff members who tuned in who couldn't be presenting tonight, we thank you as well for everything that you've done. Just have a wonderful night, everybody. We wish you well, and thank you for your time this evening, and have a great week further. All the best. Thank you.